And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Hans Wilhelm, mystic author and illustrator of over 200 books for all ages, including some together with Byron Katie. His books have sold over 40 million copies and have been translated into 30 languages. Hans, welcome back. It's great to see you again. Oh, Jeff, it's a great honor and pleasure to see you again. Thank you for inviting me again after our session. Well, we had an amazing podcast that was a great response, and I'm glad to have you back. So if you don't mind, today let's start with the Earth School, and what are we learning here? Jeff, may I, before I answer that question, because I'm sure there may be some new uh, listeners at this show, maybe briefly give an idea where my information, my knowledge comes from, because why would they need to believe what I'm saying? I, I like to share the source of my understanding of the spiritual laws a little bit so that people understand where it comes from, if it's all right with you. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so I've been studying the spiritual path for almost uh, more than 60 years and have learned a lot of different spiritual paths, have met wonderful teachers. But for the last 40 years, I was getting closer and closer to the information that came to us from the absolute reality, from divinity directly through a woman in Germany. Her name is Gabriele, and she gives this information, has been giving this information for almost 50 years. And her author her books, the revelations are um, stored in the Sophia Library in Germany and also available, of course, via the publishing company. Uh, why I like this path is that everything that I've learned before comes together here. It is also in today's language, like I studied Edgar Casey for a long time. It's very difficult, Edgar Casey, to uh, really understand. And we have to read the sentence three times before you know what he means. But this is now is in today's language very clear. This all the di divine angelic beings who gives us this information over the time. And it is of such depth and clarity as I have not found it in any other path. And the other great thing is here that you don't have to join anything. There is no membership. There is no group. There is no, not even no teaching classes. It is all a path between you and divinity within yourself. So it's a total path of freedom where nobody interferes with you if you like the material and if the material uh, responds to you. So this is where I come from. And this is what I have been doing over the last 10 years for myself to clarify in my own mind, the information that is given to us. And what I do, I draw this in a short little videos because I'm also an illustrator and see how it all connects. Like here, we have got karma, somebody do something bad to someone else. And then it stores in the Akashic records and the soul as well in the planets and how it comes back. And when one sees very clearly of how karma actually works and how it all connects and how the dots connect, it's a very different understanding. So all my videos, there are over 130 now, are basically visual illustrations of the spiritual laws. And from the response I get and how people love the videos, I know that this is something which is enjoyed and helps a lot of people on different subjects. And I cover in these videos different subjects. And I think today we will go through some of them. And you mentioned the first one was the uh, uh, the Amazing Earth School. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's yes. Thing. So. According to my understanding, and I have no need to convince anybody about this, if this, what I share with you, works with you, fine. If it doesn't work, it's also fine. But I share this with you if I have to come to understand. We are here on the Earth planet only for a very short time, and therefore Earth planet is not our home. It is a temporary place for us to grow and to un mostly to undo our karma in a very a short and effective way. As spiritual beings, we have once lost our high energy and left the absolute reality and fell into the temporal reality, which the Bible calls the fall. And in that process, we have lost a lot of energy. We have, we have worked and spoken and acted against the law of love. This created karma, which is a soul burden. And for us to return back to, the, uh, to our pure original state of being, of perfection or divinity, we have to undo our karmic burden. It's very simple. There's nothing, see, I, I think most people understand that we have to undo our karma. Now we can do this in the purification sphere and the spiritual spheres, but it takes much longer there, although time is differently perceived in these spheres. 
And also it can be more painful because we do not have the physical body as a buffer to a uh, form of our own karma. So divinity gave us the opportunity to incarnate very short to planet Earth in a very intense environment to undo our karma as fast as we can and as, uh, as efficient as we can. So before we incarnate here to planet Earth, before we join this Earth school, we are given a rough outline of our life, how, what it will be. We, we see it like a riverbed where all the different difficulties might be and different uh, challenges will be. And these are usually things which we have caused in previous lifetimes. And we will face them and we will look at them and we will ask ourselves, am I now willing to really undo this karma, to face this challenge and now do it with love or not? And all of us have said yes to our task, which we knew before, which we knew before we incarnated, which is very interesting that nobody is here against their own free will. We all come came here because we agreed to it. So we join here this school and we all have different school uniforms, which is our physical body and some are black and some are yellow and some are pink and some are black, a uh, different color brown. And, and here we go through our life. It's no coincidence with the parents we incarnate. They are usually uh, spirit beings or other souls we have incarnated before. And we usually have a little bit karma between our family members as well. And throughout the day and throughout our life, we are continuously receiving the karma that we have once uploaded into the repository planets, which means every encounter we have, every situation, every challenge we have is basically something that we have once sown in the past. We are not really experiencing anything new. We are on a rewinding of our own lives of the past. So this time we suddenly face this one person who cuts us off in the traffic, who gives us a, a very nasty comment, et cetera, et cetera. All these incidences are things which we have caused in a previous lifetimes. And now this time we have the opportunity to undo it. And how do we undo it? Of course, the most potent one is, of course, is through forgiveness. If there's anything to be forgiven, we forgive the person or we ask for forgiveness. Uh, also, when we did realize that we did something wrong, it's repentance, remorse, deep remorse is very important. It has to be stored in our soul so that next time we are tempted to do a similar thing, not to do it again. And then asking for forgiveness, ask divinity for forgiveness. And then the karma can be dissolved. So it's a very simple way, but it's a way most people are not aware of. Because when we are faced with a difficult, challenging situation in our job in our family in our life we often see ourselves as a victim and we never are a victim whatever we are encountering is something that we have sown in the past and now is the opportunity to conquer it with love and that is actually the main reason why we are and of course it's only what less than eight hundred thousand hours 30,000 days, it's nothing. Our visit here is so very, very short. Remember, we are eternal beings. And this little visit here to Earth is very short. And uh, the other thing to do here is also to learn uh, to love and service. Service is the highest form of love. Service to others, service to the nature kingdoms, to planet Earth, and to our fellow human beings. So that is, in a nutshell, the reason, and of course, when we die, and when we leave this earth school behind, that can be compared to graduation, and which is in truth a very fabulous event. It's something to celebrate. We we went through a very difficult period, and now we are we have hopefully cleared up some karma and not added karma, because a lot of us we can also add karma through negative decision, and then we are free of that, and we are free of the difficult earth life. Because life on earth for most people is extremely, extremely difficult. We may all smile on our Instagram photos, but the actual life for the most people are actually very, very tough. And for good reasons, because we have chosen to come here to undo our karma in a very short time. If we can compare this school here, like Harvard or Yale or some one of the uh, Ivy uh, co colleges, uh, which are very difficult to get in and also to stay in. And because Earth 
is now going into a very high, a much higher vibration, which means there will be major earth changes taking place in probably our lifetime uh, to a degree that more difficulties and challenging situations we will be facing. All this we knew prior our incarnation and the souls in the purification spheres are totally aware of this. That's why we suddenly have this enormous increase of the population. Until the year 1900, I think there were 1.5 billion people on Earth, more or less the same for hundreds or thousands of years. Suddenly, it increased to 8 billion people in a very short time. Why? Because all these souls are desperate to incarnate to planet Earth, to participate on this uh, curriculum, and to undo their karma in the fastest way. And it may be very difficult at times, but it's never too difficult. We are strong enough to be able to face any challenge we are encountering. That, I think, in a nutshell, is the story. I'm sure you've got many questions. Yes. Well, basically, our memory is wiped before we get here, and that's why we don't have any, obviously, memory of this. Yes. So isn't it an opportunity to create even more karma before undoing what we came here for? Most certainly. Most certainly it is. Unfortunately, it is, yes. We can as much as easily be tempted to live a more egocentric and egoistic kind of life than before, or we can do the more selfless kind of life. Resource. That is true, and you are right. We, we No, it's not unfortunately. There's a reason why we are having this blankness, why we don't remember our past lives, because if we would truly remember all the horrors and the difficult situation we have faced and done in past lifetimes, we would be so burdened, we would be sort of depressed, and we would be we would be able to function. So out of mercy, the memories of our past lives are taken away from us so that we can start this life more or less fresh. And yes, we can be tempted, uh, and we are tempted continuously in going the negative way, but the rules of life are very clear in every calc in every uh, civilization, we do have the golden rule, which is very clear. If we just live by the golden rule, we can't make any mistakes. Do unto others as you want to wish them to do unto you, or do not unto others as you don't want them to do unto you as well. So that is a simple way. Then we do have the Ten Commandments, of course, very clear as well. Don't kill anybody, don't hurt anybody, don't lie, etc. And of course, then the Sermon on the Mount, which goes even deeper into how to become a more purified soul. So we do all have the guidance. We all know the golden rule. Nobody can say, oh, I didn't know how to play this game, this school. We knew it. And if we act against it, it will have consequences in this and future lifetimes. Yes, you're right there. Earlier you mentioned that divine angelic beings are giving the information out. It's true. Is it possible these angelic beings could also be considered extraterrestrials? Extra terra, extra earth in my understanding, and I think everybody can see it different, is still in the, uh, in the, in the temporary reality. Uh, it is something in, in these lower, one of the lower seven purification spheres. I would not call the angelic being in the absolute reality extra terror. Extra terror. terror is just a um, crystallization of thought forms, of, of, of light energy. Well, this is planet Earth here. It's too far removed from the absolute reality. And therefore, the information I'm referring to and is given by the angelic forces are coming from the absolute reality. And the absolute reality is seven-dimensional. These are seven-dimensional beings who try very hard to make the laws of the universe understandable for us in a three-dimensional world. And uh, therefore, I do not use extraterrestrial. No, I would not inter I would not accept anything which doesn't come from the absolute reality. And it's very easy to know the distinction because when you read the material, it is love-based totally. It's not power-based, it's love-based. And the love-basedness will help me, helps, has helped me to understand it and also fall more and more in love with it. And the other thing is, it's not just the understanding which I have gained over these years. I have tried to apply, and I'm still applying, all these guidances, these suggestions, these uh, tasks the spiritual world gives us in these of, uh, revelations. And I found out they work. And they really make me more free, more comfortable, more light-filled, more calmer. 
And that I feel is only possible if it's given from a very high source or the highest source. I love the words that you said, absolute reality. Are you saying that that's only the seventh dimension or is it even just the reality on the other side? Because quite a few near-death experiencers will report that once they're on the other side, they'll be in this realm where they basically know everything. And I feel like that's the absolute reality. I cannot speak anybody who has experienced the uh, near-death experience. Um, I believe most souls who experience a near-death experience are not reaching the absolute reality. They are coming into higher forms. There are seven layers, and the upper layers are pretty light-filled. As a matter of fact, there are many souls uh, living in the highest, seventh uh, um, reality of the temporary uh, reality, who believe they are in heaven. And they do not understand that it goes a step further into the absolute reality, because life up there is already so blissful. So, yes, up there in this a relative reality, there are seven layers. Um, there are definitely areas which can appear like heaven, but real heaven is absolute and is non-changing, it's constant evolution, and it's always in infinity. It's 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 different. It is much higher than our seven realities in the temporary reality. I know when I speak about it, it's always a bit clumsy. That's why when I use my videos where I draw these seven uh, layers and as also the absolute reality visually it's very clear to understand so anybody who has got problems understanding what i'm trying to convey may want to look out some of my videos the best one is i think how reality works uh, that's a very short video but it explains exactly where we come from and where we are going back to from the seven dimensional reality and the absolute reality to the lower one for the temporary one because this will all disappear in no time and Earth is already in the transition phase of slowly getting again to, into a higher vibration and reality. And slowly the whole temporary reality will eventually merge back into the absolute reality. You said the words relative reality. Are those yes. the layers between the Earth and the absolute? We are part of the relative temporary. Another word is temporary reality. We are we are on the lowest level. The lowest is this. We are only talking about vibration, Jeff. As you surely know, we are only talking about vibration and fluctuation. This even matter is nothing vibration. And the lowest vibration is the crystallization of of uh, energy, which is light ether, and that we call matter. That's but there is nothing really. An atom isn't really existing. There has no real real uh, form. Uh, not the word what I'm using. Solid solidity. Mm -hmm. It's all vibration. And uh, the highest vibration is, of course, the absolute reality. And we are here on the lowest one, the planet Earth, which is matter. And that's what is also the realm of cause and effect. There is no cause and effect in the absolute reality, but we have it here. And this here we also have the, the realm of contrast of good and evil, black and white, and, the, and also space and time. All these three things are only temporary. The absolute reality does not have it the way we understand it. Do you think that this reality is some type of simulated reality created by the absolute? No, I do not believe it. I know there are a lot of people who believe in the matrix and so on, and they may be right or not. In my understanding and my belief, no. There is no need. This is not what divinity wanted. It is... Uh, when creation started, this is how it all started a long time ago, when creation just started, some spirit beings, perfect spirit beings, left the absolute reality on their own accord to create their own reality. And the Bible calls this the fall. And basically, we are all, strictly speaking, the fallen angels. And now it's time for us to return because we made a big mess, a big mistake. And most Angelibis have already realized that. We have also realized that, most of us, on the uh, more uh, on a soul level, our ego level still doesn't believe it. Our ego identifies only with our physical body, and that's why, we, as you mentioned earlier, we can easily be tempted to fall back into the ego world here. Uh, but we are all divine beings, and we all return back and uh, uh, eternal beings as well, luminous, glorious beings, and this is our true nature, and we have just forgotten it. And uh, this also is similar to love. We are love. We are love. We are this giving, loving, illuminous, wonderful being. And that is our true nature. That is our essence. While speaking about love, if we move into light, 
how does somebody know if they are a light worker and what do they do as a light worker? That's a good subject, a good question, uh, Jeff. Now, light worker is something which I think came up <laughs> only recently since we talked something like New Ages, but there is, a, there is a, a true history to it. As I mentioned earlier, planet Earth is now going through a major change. Uh, we see it. I mean, <laughs> we have to re read the newspaper. It's always amazing for me that, that, that politicians are fighting in Ukraine about wars and spending and so on. In truth, our house is burning. Our house we are living in is in an extreme. We should all focus on trying to help this planet Earth as it basically blows up in front of us and around us. But anyway, the idea is that the vibration of the Earth is going slowly higher into a higher vibration. And not everybody, every soul will be able in future to incarnate again because the vibration of the Earth is higher. But in this process, it will be a very, and it is a very, very difficult process for all souls who came here knowingly that they will go through a very difficult time to purify their own life, uh, their own soul burden. And in this period, there are souls needed to help and guide, support, hold hands, etc., like a like a parent. So angelic beings in the lower, uh, as well as from the high absolute reality, as well as from the lower uh, purification spheres, who are not karmically burdened, who do not need to come to planet Earth, have voluntarily agreed to come from all different levels of the temporary reality at this time to incarnate to planet Earth to help the Earth as well as the inhabitants in that transition. We call them light workers because they are not here because to undo their soul burden, they are here to help and to serve. Now, the problem is that these are such sensitively highly evolved beings when they come here on planet Earth and see the utter mess and horrors and brutality we have on this planet, they really are getting very easily responded. They also forgot their past lives and their, their history, like everybody else. They are suddenly here and says, what am I doing here? This is horrible. This is not my place. I want to go home. I want to go wherever I am. So a lot of light workers who on the other side agreed to come here are now suddenly finding themselves in an environment they didn't expect how horrific it was. And um, they are becoming very depressed and very, very uh, sad and very hopeless. Now there is, but uh, Dolores Cannon has written a wonderful book. Uh, I got the title something like The Third Waves of Helpers, uh, where she has had a lot of clients with whom she put into past lives and the reasons why they incarnated. They were all souls who came here for the purpose to help the planet Earth, but have been so distraught and upset about the condition here on planet Earth that they looked for help from Dolores Cannon to find out what their purpose is. And she explains the different waves of uh, people, of uh, souls who came here and why we are here. And they're basically here to help us and uh, people who are, that can be our neighbor, it can be our grandmother. We don't know who they are. They have no halo. We don't know who they are, but they do send something out, something comforting, something wonderful, something helping. In my video, I don't know which video it was, on energies, I think, I have got the story of uh, Viktor Frankl as he was part, uh, as he was a young man in the concentration camps. And he writes about that during that time, there were always some men who went through birth to bench to bench to help out the people there who were, and gave their last bread and they had words of comfort and uh, supported them. They were able to do this. Everybody else was exhausted and basically surviving, but there were always these extra little angels who walked through it and helped those people. So I believe they are everywhere around us. The people are here. We have been, we are surrounded by angels, not only on the spiritual level, because we all have our guardian angel, and maybe even more so than just one when we are in a difficult situation, but we also have now angelic beings who have incarnated here to help and guide people. What if somebody is sitting here watching this video right now and wondering, am I a light worker? How can you help them decide whether they are or are not? The rules for a light worker are identically the same as for everybody, for you and me, for everybody else. We are here to love. That's the only thing we're here to love and to do service. 
Irrespective of that, we also have to undo our karma. But if they are not facing many karma, they're here to love and service. And through love and service, they're fulfilling their task as a light worker, as you and I are fulfilling our obligation as a human, as, as a soul, to undo our karma and to grow for ourselves. So I think it's not necessary for a light worker to have got special guidance, special instructions. The instructions are the same. They are the golden rule. They are the Ten Commandments. They are the Sermon on the, Mo uh, on the Mount, as well as the law of uh, service and the law of love. Well, let me ask you a personal question. Do you think you're here to undo karma or to help out as a light worker? Oh, I do have definitely karma. <laughs> I won't go into details about my life, but there were karmic issues, a lot of them, and I'm sure there are a lot of my coming. And in the process, I try to help and be of, uh, of uh, whatever I can do. But my uh, daily life is 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 filled with with challenges as uh, anybody else's, which means that I have to learn to love and serve, and I'm I'm doing the best I can and. Uh, Hopefully, I won't have too many regrets when I leave this planet. <laughs> what do you think about suicide? I mean, if we signed up to come here and it's like we're exiting the game early, and I think generally all over the planet, most people find it as something that you should not be doing. You should, you know, finish out the life. Suicide is a very big topic right now, as you probably know, whatever newspaper article and so on, particularly with young people, particularly after COVID. And also elderly people, loneliness is probably one of the major reasons why people decide to leave this planet. Um, yes, you are right. We are given here a certain number of days. And we all knew before we incarnated, as I said earlier, how long we will live here. Yeah, our death is predetermined by ourselves. Everybody dies right on time, as Byron Katie used to say. So if we interfere with that and... Uh, end our life here, we're interfering with the gift that was given to us by divinity. Because it is a gift to be born and being allowed to undo our karma in such a short time. So we interfere with that. And uh, we are not achieving anything because most likely most of these souls who suddenly feel they can no longer cope with the difficulties they are facing will have to incarnate again and face the same situation because we haven't learned the lesson. So that is the unfortunate thing for most souls who commit suicide, that they have to do the whole thing all over again. That's one thing. The other thing is they may also feel on the other side so guilty of what they have because they realize uh, the big mistakes they have made and their guilt sometimes ejects them away, how shall I say, from their normal, from uh, into isolation. And they stay there until the day when they were supposed to die on planet Earth. So they can have a very isolating and lonely kind of existence in the spiritual world. And as I said, most of all of them will feel the utter pain that they caused to the people who left, uh, who they left behind. Because the people left behind will be utterly guilt ridden. In most cases, they will feel, oh, if I only had known, if I watched it, I could have done something because I couldn't really. But uh, they feel guilt ridden and horrible. And these emotions, they will be felt on the other side. Do we really want to feel that? Uh, some people commit suicide to teach a lesson to somebody else they hate and so on. But boy, do they get it back when they are on the other side. It will be very, very difficult. So we are interfering with something that we have originally totally agreed to do. We are here on our own accord and our own decision. So, and no task that is given to us is actually too big for us. So if we are facing a very enormous challenge, we only face it because on our soul level, we knew we can cope with it. And now it's the time to undo this big chunk of karma. But here, of course, we may be so negative, so sad, so upset uh, that we think this is too much for us. Therefore, it is much more advisable to go through the difficulty as much as easy as we can. We, we forget that wherever we are, whatever we have to chase and ch change and we are challenged with, we are surrounded by enormous help. We have got our guardian spirit. We have got Christ. We have got our angelic forces. We have divinity, God. We can ask 
divinity, God, in our way or form, we can speak to God, to Christ, to anybody we wish to ask, to help us through this period, not to ask them how it should be solved, because that is not for us to know. I said, I don't, I want to keep the lover, I want to keep the job, etc., etc. That doesn't work, because divinity knows what's best for us, our ego doesn't but that we surrender to whatever may come to us. And we will do in the process the best we can. When we surrender to that and to basically the words of the uh, our Father, thy will be done. In these words, when we truly feel them and surrender to them, is enormous peace. And that can help us to go through the period that is that we are facing. And when we are coming out of it and through it, we are much stronger. And then we may be even able to help others in similar situations because we went through it. I mean, we know the story very much true with alcohol, AA, with Alcohol Anonymous, where people who went through this horrible situation and they are now helping others. This is a tremendous gift and opportunity to do what I said earlier, service and love. And once we have um, passed our test, our challenge, we will be much stronger and can do the same for others. It's amazing how often the word surrender comes up in podcasts over and over again. And it is probably one of the most powerful things that, you know, we should be doing on this planet. One thing that I question is how do you balance surrender with other words like ambition and achieve things. Yeah, achievement. It yeah. all comes from our ego. Yeah. And there's nothing really wrong with wanting to do something like if I want to make a business and to support my family and so on, there's nothing wrong with it. But it is the ego decisions which makes us which makes us cling to it and the ego, ego identification. And there may be coming a time when we are challenged to that degree that we says, all right, so far and now I surrender. And let it be, let God do it. But we do always our best we can. We can we get up again uh, when we fell down and we start over again. We, it's always a question of standing up again and trying again. And in the, the end result, leave it to God. I do not believe in this kind of in a, in a secret thinking that we must know exactly what kind of house we will have and what kind of car we will drive and how rich we will be, etc. And, and put this and project this into the future. That can be a very big burden for us because these are images, powerful images, that can actually pull us back into another incarnation. So I would be careful for that. I would do the best I can in the job and the task that is before me. And the result... I will leave to uh, to God the same as I did this when I do the interview with you. I think I will. Well, I don't know what comes up, but I totally surrender that. Hopefully, everything that I say might be helpful to one person at least, and I surrender to that hope. And I can't do more than that. Well, you mentioned having these images, like you said, of cars and houses and things. So that means the power of our thoughts is remarkable. But how do we use them in the right way? Yes, the so thoughts can be very tricky. That's true. Thoughts are unfortunately taking us away from reality, which means a thought that we have encapsulates us totally. We are th suddenly thinking about the bill I have to pay next month. I can think for 20 minutes about it. Meanwhile, the whole world around me disappears. Every thought we have is basically takes us away from anything that happens around us. So the Thought isolates us, makes us totally separates us, and uh, makes us miss reality. So thinking is very, very problematic. Um, thinking is a tool of the ego mostly because it's not necessarily intelligence; it's intellect. And thoughts are, of course, the big problem because with thoughts we can create so much mess. A thought is a living entity. A repeated thought can leave our brain and can basically go into the environment, find similar like, my, like vibrating other thought complexes, become bigger, can influence other people, and eventually comes back to us, and can really uh, create whole nations of thinking a very negative or destructive pattern, also sometimes maybe a positive one we have that but these are thought energies they are enormous when we walk through a city like new york or whatever through the streets 
the streets are filled with floating thought energy uh, patterns, complexes, and uh, they can easily attach themselves to us if similar, similar vibration is in us. And we can also harm people with our thoughts. For instance, if we have a negative thought about a worker, co-worker, that negative thought can leave our mind, our brain, and float towards that co-worker. If the person has got similar vibrating thoughts in themselves, it may attach itself to the co-worker and can actually increase the negativity in the co-worker to the degree that the co-worker, because of his new thought patterns, can create a negative act like hitting somebody, hurting somebody. If that co-worker does it, I am co-responsible to what the co-worker does because I initiated this whole thing through my thinking. In my videos on thoughts are alive, uh, it is very clearly demonstrated how it works. And when you see it, how powerful thoughts are, because everything around us started with a thought. A thought has an inner desire to ma materialize itself, to manifest itself. Like an architect has an idea of a plan of a house, he sketches it in his mind first, and he sketches it, and then they build it. So it starts from the thought into something meta. And everything that we look, the computer you're looking at, etc., it's all, these are all manifested thought forms, including planet Earth themselves. So we are surrounded by manifested thought forms, and we should be very careful what we think, because they all have the desire to manifest, and negative thoughts do manifest. But isn't our minds constantly thinking thoughts? I mean, don't we think like thousands of thoughts every day? Like we have this monkey mind that's always going on and on and on. I know, I know. That's a big problem. And that's why Eckhart Tolle has got this wonderful book, The uh, Power of Now. Uh, yes, we, it is most helpful to be the being. In being, when we are, when we are from thinking into being, in being there is no thinking. And when we are calming our mind, our thinking mind, our monkey mind, we are being. And then when we are be, we are here. I see everything. I notice everything. I am here with a person. But unfortunately, when we are with another person and they say something to us, in our mind, we are already creating the answer instead of truly listening. And it is a skill uh, which is very difficult to relearn again, the skill of truly being, still being. Divinity is just being. Divinity doesn't think. Divinity is. And there's a big difference. Thinking comes from our ego. Our ego identifies with our physical body. And our ego is deeply interested of the survival and well-being of our physical body. And we easily see threats towards our body, to our existence. And that creates even more thinking. How can I do this? Is this person there to help me or to hurt me? Is the situation helpful? What will happen, etc.? These are all thoughts to protect our ego, our physical body. Our spirit being, spirit body doesn't need that. But we do need it here in our body. And unfortunately, we have become supermaster in thinking and created a lot of uh, bad stuff in the meantime. You mentioned something earlier, and I want to get back to that. And that was intelligence and intellect. What's the difference? Well, the thinking, the ego thinking, is the intellect. Intelligence is another word for God. God is intelligence, ingenious intelligence and simplicity. Uh, intelligence is something which always is at peace. It's always there. And let's, for instance, say we have created through our negative acting thinking causes like illness, like fear, like hunger. These are things which happened here on this planet Earth because we are in the realm of contrast, of cause and effect. So to overcome, let's say, hunger, or let's say, let's say illness, we can create through our intellect wonderful things of medical operations. We find uh, we can gene manipulations, we can medicine, and so on. The list goes on and on and on of things we can do to undo our illness. In hunger, it's the same situation. We are creating uh, fertilizers, insecticiders, a special GMO uh, uh, seeds, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, irrigation, all this stuff. And in what was the third one, fear, we have got weapons and stuff like this. All these solutions to these three uh, 
negative situations here in our life comes from our intellect. All these internet uh, solutions have caused a lot of pain to the planet Earth because it means usually a lot of things, pro uh, production uh, and, and uh, mining, etc. And all of these solutions cost money. And somebody's uh, getting rich on it. Therefore, it's all intellectual results. Now, intelligence goes very, very different. Intelligence looks at illnesses and says, Illness only happens because of karma. Just do love and you're not creating karma. Very simple. You can undo even your illness through forgiveness, remorse, and forgiving others. So there is nothing that doesn't cost anything. Illness is a result of karma. If we do not create karma, we do are not ill. Hunger is also a result of karma. But hunger can also be solved the same way through, uh, through sharing, to giving, doing the opposite in this lifetime. And also a simple way of, uh, way, for instance, if we now wouldn't kill all the animals for meat uh, consumption and use the land just for, for vegetation, for, for green stuff, and we all go on a vegan diet, we have more than uh, we need food to feed the whole world. And the last thing, fear as well, is also love. The answer is always love here. So intelligence knows that every difficult situation that we are facing here on Earth can only be solved permanently through love. That doesn't cost anything and has no side effects. But anything that the intellect creates has side effects and it costs money. In my video on intelligence and um, uh, intellect, uh, you see very clearly how this all works together and how it comes and why we have it. But we are very proud of our intellect and, uh, and intellect and the artificial and intelligent uh, intel, uh, and artificial intelligence should actually be called artificial intellect. And Harari, uh, Noah Harari, who wrote this wonderful book uh, uh, on, 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 what is it called, the human uh, demon or whatever, he wrote about the dataism exactly, exactly, and he wrote it a few years ago, where we are now with a chat box with the AI at the moment, the whole threat coming. It's all intellectual knowledge, which we are fearing now, which we have created the gigantic monster of the uh, I, 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 which is now taking over our lives in ways we cannot even imagine. But it's not intelligence. It's only intellect coming back to us. I was looking at your YouTube channel and I saw one of your videos was about the Luciferian doctrine. Is, oh, does that have anything to do with when all the angels left the absolute reality or is it something completely different? Well, it is linked to that. Yes, it is. Of course, with with Lucifer is sort of the symbol of of when the angels left the uh, left the angelic realms and fell. Um, the, and, uh, the Luciferian doctrine is a slightly different way of telling the story. Uh, the story. The people who believed in the Luciferian doctrine are actually saying that Lucifer is a god who left the bad god behind. Uh, the god of love behind, and uh, he, they tell the story because uh, Lucifer explained to to uh, Adam and Eve why they're here and so on, whilst God said you can't touch the tree of knowledge. This is one of the, I think, the second most popular video I have over a million viewers on that one because I explain how it all works in detail. The idea here I would take away from is there is a lot of teaching out there, a lot of stuff out there, New Age teachings and other teachings which are based still in the Luciferian doctrine. And our whole world, uh, uh, not the earth, but the world, our business world, political world, etc., follows this Luciferian doctrine motive in many ways. And we have the Freemasons, and they are based on this one, as well as lots of other kind of uh, group secret societies, and therefore, I made this video because to clarify this point, and uh, I would just be, uh, I do not believe in this uh, for various reasons, because wherever they, you see their influence, there was no love. And I believe in love and service. So I have a very free understanding that uh, the Luciferian doctrine, although held by many organi secret organizations, is not for me. I also noticed another video on your channel was about soulmates. Is that the same thing as twin flames? I'm sharing here the information as it's given to us in from the spiritual world. 
the soulmates as people here are looking for on planet Earth is, oh, where is my soulmate? I would be happy once I meet my soulmate. Um, is not coming into our life in 99.9%. And the reason is very, very simple. The soulmate, we are all kind of mated with a male or female partner in the absolute reality. We are not alone. We do have a partner and we need this partner uh, because life is more interesting to have somebody to share something with. So we do have the real soulmate, somebody who is with us for eternity in this absolute reality. Now, when we incarnate here to planet Earth, that soulmate will not come with us in most cases for the simple reason it would be just too wonderful and too easy for us to have somebody who understands everything, but what we can do and what we do and etc. It would be not challenging. We came here to be challenged. We come here to undo stuff. It's the same like if you have a wonderful pet dog and so on, and you love that dog more than anything else, you cannot take that dog to college, even if it would be a comfort dog. So no, there is a reason why you suddenly go to college away from the comfort of your family and suddenly facing all the new life totally on your own. To grow, we have to be sort of in a way on our own here. And we uh, face this uh, and we have to, because the path is a path within. The, everything what I've talked about is nothing else but walking within. The kingdom of God is in us. And if I see the kingdom in a soul partner next to me, I'm not working on the path within myself. So the soul partner can be, in some instance, our guardian angel. But uh, he, is, uh, he or she is not incarnating in the same time unless, and there's one exception here, when we both decide to come sort of like light workers here to planet Earth to really help others, then our purpose is not to undo karma, but this purpose is here to do something uh, bigger than ourselves, to help others. And there, of course, it's wonderful to have a partner next to our side to support us. So in that case, we do have a soul, uh, soul partner with us. I do not use the word twin flame. Um, but I, that is my explanation, my understanding of soul partners. And when I heard this from the spiritual world, it made total sense to me. But I know a lot of lonely people are waiting desperately for their soul partner, or they think they are married to their soul partner, but it isn't their soul partner. And that is okay. For the short time we can incarnate here on planet Earth, it is absolutely all right to be married to somebody uh, and share our life, have sex with, etc. That is absolutely right. It has nothing to do with our relationship in the absolute reality. Our soul partner absolutely proves of that. We do need the, the wives, the husband, the children here in our life to grow. And that is a support. There can be close souls we have maybe incarnated with before, and they are now our partners, but they are not our soul partners in most cases. What do you think about when people say that we reincarnate with a group of people over and over again, that's called the soul group. That's a problem. You're right. Oh, you know, we do. First of all, yes, our family we incarnate is usually somebody there in the family or the whole family we incarnated before. And why do we reincarnate over and over again? Because we don't learn the lesson. That's why some people incarnate a hundred thousand times sometimes to come to earth and do not make any progress. And so do does a whole group of souls incarnate with them over and over again because the progress isn't there. There is it is not the desire of re, uh, of um, the absolute reality of divinity for us to reincarnate over and over again. This is not our int the intention of divinity. One incarnation should be it, and maybe clear up as much as we can. Sometimes two or three, but then over with it. So we should not reincarnation. We can make this our last reincarnation, as we discussed in my previous program, we uh, talk with you. This can be our last incarnation. It is not lawful for us to reincarnate over and again, and it's not lawful for a whole group of souls to incarnate over and over again, unless, as I said earlier, they're coming here only to help others, other souls in this time of transition as light workers when they do not have karma on their own. I want to go back to something. You were talking about how thoughts can affect other people if they're vibrating at the same level of the thought. So how do we guard our own energies against negative thoughts that are out there? 
the only way to really do our guarding is that we bring ourselves into the high vibration and when we feel a negative thought is coming up to look at it as soon as possible a thought does not have to take over our whole mind consciousness or our time and our life when we feel we are here having a, on the wrong track we are confused we are angry we are upset question that uh, that uh, thought immediately question it is it true uh, and where does it come from and what does it want to tell me so a thought comes only to us because there's something similar in us the outside world is nothing but a mirror of ourselves so if a thought comes to us affects us in a, in some way then this means that there's something in is that we clear up it's not bad for the soul uh, for this thought to come to us and hit us and suddenly bring us into a mood because it wakes us maybe up to something that needs to be cleared up what is bad if if we get sucked into the negativity of that thought that is dangerous and that can lead to uh, more isolation loneliness and up to suicide in the event or even doing some some horrible stuff so we should must catch ourselves as fast as possible and there are many different ways of doing it of course as i said Eckhart Tolle with this wonderful book uh, the power of now has got many many ideas and suggestions and of course meditation can help us because in meditations we are at least breaking our daily rhythms and suddenly can flex then having uh, daily reflections at the end of the day maybe also at midday to write down quickly what were the major thoughts which we have had and why did we have it what does it mean to us so we have ways of catching ourselves because all the troubles we feel all the suffering we feel are nothing but thoughts all suffering comes from a confused mind as byron katie says and it's true it's our thinking which creates the suffering now we may have pain once in a while because somebody hits us physically that is pain and that is unavoidable sometimes but the suffering is the interpretation of the pain is this now did somebody kick me here because they want to hurt me then i'm suffering did somebody kick me here to get my attention and embrace me because i'm an old friend that's a different story it's our interpretation of the situation which causes the negativity or positive uh, 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 vibration so thoughts are here to be looked at to be questions and to be given over and find out what is the sort uh, what is the source of it so would you say if you want to reduce your suffering you just reframe the situations of your life that's one way of doing it of course we have to look at it it's not always easy to do this uh, but yes uh, to look at a different perspective or as we say find out what is the positive element in it what are the three positive elements uh, in any uh, negative situation by and Katie would ask and that is true because nothing can exist without the energy of divinity for instance uh, divinity god is like the canvas of our life around us and we paint the, our picture on it but if we go uh, nothing can can exist without the canvas and if we go right to the canvas in every situation what is the god element here what does the situation want to teach me we look at it very very differently and we can in the end become grateful for it when we understand the gift every problem has for us because we need that gift the problem comes into our life because we need the gift of the problem when we lose a job we may be very upset we may be suicidal we may be very negative and when, but when we surrender and see what is the positive situation in the situation it can be multitude of things maybe now i can finally move to texas or do something else and with my job fast start a new career there are a thousand possibilities and if we focus on the positive element of anything we then can do the next step which is actually some action to find a new job to decide on a, maybe a new schooling teaching whatever needs to be done but until for uh, uh, for as long as we are cursing the clouds we do not see the sunshine behind it well we've mentioned your youtube channel a few times is it called hans wilhelm or something else if you punch in hans wilhelm it comes up yeah it's an, i think it's the youtube channel is hans wilhelm my uh, website where all these videos are also available for free is called lifeexplained.com both ways you can find it and see it and and enjoy one video creator to another it must take a long time to do the illustrating how are you doing that a certain software 
no, I do it by hand. I've, I've been illustrating books, hundreds of books for years. So oh, they are very clumsy, my illustration. They are not high tech. And I think that's the charm in it. There are some channel who put very high tech kind of three dimensional uh, illustration there. Somehow I find them a bit boring, but you know, I like, what was this guy on television who always drew pictures, very, very- Bob pictures. Ross. Yeah, Bob Ross. I loved it. I was mesmerized by him. I said, that's the way I do it. The simplicity, the rawness, the directness. And this is what I do in my videos. I think that comes up as far more charming than seeing the perfection. How often are you posting videos there? I try to make one uh, one a month, sort of. So I do have now, of 10 years, I've got 130 uh, kind of videos. Yeah, one a month if I can make it. Mm -hmm. I have no deadline. I, put, I do it whenever I like. Whenever I have to learn something new, when I stumble on something, oh, this is interesting, let me visualize it for myself. I make these videos for myself to see how it visually it all fits together. And then I share them for those who are interested. Again, these videos are without advertisements. They are not for asking for any money. They are totally self-created and self-supported. They're just a joy to share. And I have zero interest, as I said at the beginning, to convince anybody. If they work for anybody, great. If not, also great. I think that's great because sometimes just hearing about something or reading about something, it's not enough to help a person understand. They actually have to visually see it to get it. I definitely have to. I definitely have to. I can, uh, write, uh, reading descriptions of something is very difficult. I see uh, somebody shows me the picture and I immediately grasp it. Mm -hmm. And that is actually what I do in my videos. So the people like that as well, that when they see it, how it all fits together, it is so much clearer than long texts and thick books. Well, if people have questions for you, should they ask them by commenting in your videos or contacting you directly? No, do not. Well, you are welcome to comment. I cannot answer the, I've got thousands of comments every day. I cannot answer the comments. People who have a definite clear question can send it to me. They go to my website, lifeexplained.com. There is a contact page. Write down your question and I'm happy to answer it when I have a chance. It won't be always the next day or next two days but I will definitely answer every question I receive. I cannot answer the questions under, in the comments. Well, it's just too many. All right. Well, Hans, before we finish up, can you give us one last positive message? The positive message is love is the only way forward. I mean, that's, let's think about this. Whatever we do next five minutes, next 10 minutes, the rest of the day, do it. let's do it with love. That's the only way which in the end counts. The only thing which we, in, when we leave this world how much love have we given is the only thing which matters. Hans, thank you for that message. And thank you for returning and being my guest again. It has been an honor and great, great pleasure to be with you, Jeff, again. And I wish you well. Thank you so much for having invited me. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.